everyone, and welcome back to season two of the Sharevan podcast. Neri, how you feeling? Good, super excited. We got some awesome guests for our first season opener. We have Jolene Queen Sloan and Ra, who are two Punjabi Bollywood queens from Punjab, India. Yes. Shout out to that. <laughs> Both these queens, Neri and I have the pleasure to watch in Vancouver, are changing the drag scene here. Two, three years ago, I mean, even a year ago, this was not non-existent. Oh yeah, like a year ago, there was nobody in Vancouver scene. Like when we both started, yeah, I remember, like that was the first day I came, and I'm like, oh, I'm the only Bollywood one here, and then I'm like, there is another one from Punjab. <laughs> How good is that? And now after like a year, we have a few of us, and it's just amazing to have a community, yeah. you know, who stand 100%. for each other. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. It's beautiful to see. And I love that you two are roommates. Yeah, it happened like almost three months ago. So Jolene would always like stay over the weekend and yeah. doing her gigs. And I was like, girl, you know, we have a room available if you want to just move in. Aww. And she was like, that makes my life so much easier. I'm mean, like, so mean mine. <laughs> you know, commuting from Surrey to Vancouver every day to do drag was just becoming hard because you have a full-time job along and so it was you know definitely something convenient that happened to have a place closer to downtown where you can have access to like 10-15 minutes to downtown every time yeah yeah Yeah, because I guess most of your guys' shows anyhow are probably mainly based in the downtown core yeah Yeah. mostly Davy Street yeah yeah (laughs) but here we are back in Surrey square one well I mean (laughs) welcome to the Punjabi pinned how are you doing (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much for having us I guess we could start off by just you guys telling us a bit about yourself. Okay, so I will start and my name is Jolene Queen Sloan. I started doing drag about two and a half years ago in the Yukon. Originally, I'm from Punjab, India, born and raised. And I moved to Canada about six years ago in 2016 as an international student with the dream to have, you know, an ideal gay life Mm. somewhere where it's possible when it's not possible in my own country. So um, when I came to Canada, it was really interesting for the first two, three years. Um, I was getting exposed to things like Western culture and Western things. And when I started going to the gay clubs and pubs, I saw the drag queens performing. And I'm like, this is exactly what I wanted to do and what I do. I just never knew how to do it professionally. And here you go. Boom. There is the professional version of what you have been doing since your childhood. Right. And. It's just a privilege to be in Canada and to being able to do this and to represent the community, to be an inspiration for so many people. Because um, I remember looking back, I could not find anyone when I needed to do this. There was nobody, right? Especially from Punjab, it's very conservative. We have religion, we have culture that is very strong. So I just feel privileged and very glad to be able to do that person for other people that I couldn't found when I needed it. Yeah. Yeah, Thank I you. agree with Julian. I moved here like not even like three and a half, two and a half years ago, like December, like 2019. Came here fresh off the boat from the high school. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to move to Canada, live wow. my life. And once I moved here, I'm like, oh my God, Vancouver sucks. There was no good nightlife. But one day, my friends, they took me out. They were like, oh, let's go clubbing. And I was like, oh my God, first time going to club, let's go. So I went to the clubs and they took me to a drag show. There were iconic queens like Kendall Chander, Ava Scarlett, Scarlett Bobo. Like they're all like iconic big names. And Canada and Vancouver Mm. so I saw them and I was like what the hell is that it's gorgeous I had seen drag queens on tv but seeing them in real life in action was all inspiring and after that like I was like okay that's something I want to do like it's like uh, I'm a fashion designer I'm a makeup artist and I love hair and beauty and I like doing it on myself and I was like let's combine it all together and put in some Bollywood music put in some western music mix it all together let's make something happen and a few months after that pandemic happens during pandemic i meet a friend who was a drag queen and one the first time i go to their place they were like do you want to look at my drag closet i was like are you kidding me let's do it (laughs) and i go through their drag closet trying outfits on trying their heels on trying their wigs and everything i was like 
this is it. That was this your moment. It. Yeah. And then we were like, oh, let's do some makeup. And then we did some makeup and here it was really good. After that, fast forward to September, uh, September August 2021. Wow. September 2021, a friend of mine uh, whom I know to the person who tr- let me try their clothes on. I was like, they were like, oh, my friend is doing a drag show. And I was like, oh, it, what is happening? I want to do it too. I reached out to the house and I was like, is there a spot? Can I just like, you know, perform, do a number? They were like, sure, you look beautiful. Let's do it. And that is how I performed for the first time, like August 20th at numbers. It was Triple X oh, Friday, hosted yeah. by Zanuck. That's where I met Jolene for the first time. It was her first show in Vancouver. It was my first show ever. Well, I to remember... have two brown queens like together was yeah. probably like, you exist? <laughs> yes. I was like, what? My friend was like, so before the show, a friend of mine who had hit up Jolene on Tinder was like, okay. always. <laughs> always. I mean, look at the material. <laughs> look at the material. <laughs> My friend was like, you better bring your A game. There's another Indian drag queen there. You have to show that you are the better one. I was like, girl, there's no competition. We are all yeah. doing our own fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. You know, um, that day I remember I came from the Yukon just to visit Vancouver. And I'm like, I have like these two, three days where I can make my name and I can represent myself and what I'm doing. It was actually really nerve wracking for me coming down to Vancouver because I was like, what if people don't like my culture? What if they don't mm. perceive it properly? They're just going to hate me along with that. So it's just not going to work out, you know, those insecurities. But then I found out that the community is amazing and we are killing it right now here. Yeah. yeah 100%. You guys are bringing the heat. You're bringing the pangara. You're bringing the vibe. <laughs> Thank you. The Bollywood songs. The Bollywood yeah. songs. Yeah. I mean, speaking on that, like, uh, bringing like the cultural aspect to like Vancouver as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, how has your how's your family been with this all? Like, are they aware? Like, are they do they they show up and like are they accepting? I guess you can say. I would say it's very complicated when it comes to family and being brown and from India. You know, uh, it comes with a lot of social pressure. I would say mm-hmm. where even if your parents wants to understand what you're doing, the society won't let them because they're just so cruel, you know. Um, With me, I would say my family has been really supportive for the most part. Um, They do like what I do. They do appreciate the beauty of it all. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, especially now when I have a name, when people know me, people go talk about me and they tell good things about me. It's always nice to make your parents proud by being gay. I mean, look at that, 2021, right? 2022, right there. The only trouble happens when people start bullying my brother, telling him that, oh, look what your brother is doing and it's not appropriate. What's going on? What is your family doing? Are they trying to stop him or not? And that's when, you know, the family start questioning things as well, like what's going on. And the worst part happens is when we start receiving death threats and stuff and when they go to the families because when it comes to us it's okay we don't tell them what's going on we just keep it to ourselves, and yeah. we don't want to give them that tension you know right. um but when it goes to them they are like maybe you should stop doing this because you may get killed if you're gonna keep doing this right so i do understand the perspective where they are coming from too they are caring about me they cares for me and they really want to make sure i'm safe yeah. yeah but um yeah that's why i always say it's a little bit complicated yeah. yeah, well, thanks for being honest and vulnerable yeah. and sharing your story as well. Thank you. Um, yeah, that must be obviously tough for your family and whatnot. Um, but I'm also glad that they're really open and like, you know, it's telling you you're doing great and so forth and, and supportive in that sense. So that's really great to hear. Yeah. Ra, how about yourself? My, it's like a situation with my family. The first time my mom saw that I was doing drag. Oh, uh, she phoned me. Yeah. I was outside with my friends in drag and she was like, oh, I saw these photos on Instagram. Somebody sent them to me. I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, are you trans? I was like, no. And she's like, I saw these photos of you in hair, makeup, with tits. I was like, not me, girl. Who are you talking about? I don't even know. She's like that. Oh, so you were kind of denying it. 
yeah at that point because i don't want to deal with it like the yeah. thing is i don't owe her an explanation like it's my life it's my choices i'm like i'm gonna do what i want to do and i don't interfere in your life i don't expect you to understand or interfere in my life either so at that point i was like no that's not me i don't i don't know what you're talking about so she sends me the photos and she was like also i heard your voice and it was you and i was like you had not heard me speak in english how do you know it's me she's mother she understood so after that what she told me was that she either wants to kill herself or kill me because she had birthed me and i'm a disgrace to the family and i was like you're being dramatic i was i'm like really chill person i was like you're being dramatic like it's not me just you know get over it and then she calls my cousin and he was like yeah that's them what are you going to do about it like you can't control their life you can't control what they want to do or like how are you going to stop them you're in india they're here yeah like there is no way you can interfere you can either accept or not like you can't tell them nothing so my cousin supported me in that way but like my mom didn't she told me that i should block whole of punjab if i want to do something like that because it would bring um shame to the family like she was like my family is like very much like which frustrates me they care a lot about what society has to say and i've had so many fights about them about it. i'm like live your life like why are you caring about what people have to say like they're not paying your bills yeah. they are not giving you food to eat they're not giving you shelter to live in like the worst come worst if something happens to you nobody's going to care yeah like at the end of the day they are people they are not family like you should be caring about what like is happening in the life of the people you love and now they have lost that privilege because i don't let them into my life like i don't the only thing we talk about is hi how are you what you ate oh you ate yeah nice bye mm-hmm. like there is like no like actual like they don't know what's happening in my life actually they don't they know the only the surface part of it i don't let them in and i prefer it that way yeah. like you know it's hard for me as a person like who have fought all their life like coming living in a small town coming from a low caste family where i saw like all the struggles and going to school fearing that people would know what your caste is and they would outcast you they would bully you and like your life would become miserable yeah. going from that to also discovering that you are queer you are not male not female you are non binary on top of that you are not attracted to just women you are attracted to men and everything in between so you're pansexual as well add that into the mix it a lot of like going up there was a lot of confusion there were a lot of nights where i would cry and be like what is wrong with me maybe one day i would wake up and maybe it's just a dream maybe it's not a reality and sometimes it would just be like okay i should just kill myself and i almost did and my father at that point dragged me from my hair to the hospital and was like okay you want to ruin me now ruin me like tell the police like why you killed yourself why you tried to kill yourself like and i was like okay so you don't care about my life all you care about is your own fucking status in the society yeah so at now i've stopped caring like what happens to them is their own thing like they come to me with their problems i'm like it's your business it's none of mine like you never care about my life why should i care about yours yeah so like it's very that for me but I'm living my life. I have my chosen family, yeah. Jolene. Chosen family, I have yeah. like other people. I have my whole community supporting me. If they decide to not be a part of like what I'm doing creatively, it's on them. And yeah. you know that's what I always say that I want to be that successful that when these people look at me as a drag queen, as a professional drag queen, they tell that, "Oh, you can be gay and you can be successful. There is yeah. no shame in that." right and i just want the world to know that we work way harder than what a doctor or engineer does believe me because it's not easy to you know look this pretty yeah. i would say yeah. so i mean you can try but at the end of the day <laughs> it's just not going to work out for you right yeah. so that's why i am like people need to understand the hard work the you know work it takes to be this yeah. the yeah. work it takes the comments that we have to listen from the people to yeah. be this right and that's the goal make it like you know visible everywhere 
Yeah. yeah. And you two are doing that. Like you said, like being here, I think there's one side to drag, like the glamour, the glitz, right? But there's so much more to it that people may not see yeah. on TikTok, Instagram, right? And what you're sharing is like, the truth, the reality, and like even for us, just being like we don't do drag, of course, but just being queer and brown is already hard enough. Yeah. Oh, I remember um, when I started doing drag, it was for the community, for the people. Yeah. And not knowing there is a whole thing happening on the TV about drag, which is a competition and stuff. Uh, I remember it was like two months after drag when I got an email to audition for like a TV show and I was like, oh, there cool. is a TV show that features drag queens. <laughs> this is even getting better. Just, you know, let's just keep going. <laughs> is this news that you're dropping that you're going to be part? That was three years ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are because, you dropping hints here? <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe in future, who knows? Yeah. Both of you, come I mean, on. We deserve calls. that. Yeah. Yes. The Punjabi representation. I know. 150%, oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Oh. A lot of other exciting things are happening, which is going to be bomb.com, believe me. Bomb.com. Oh, we're all we looking forward you, to that. Are you promoting Bombay now? <laughs> well, you know, she's our sister. She's our Shout sister. out we to Bombay to from her. Canada's Drag Race Season 3. Oh. Yeah, the fashion <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, I feel like like the queer like uh, community in Punjab is always frowned upon because a lot of the time the queers, they don't have any resources. So what they resort is sex work and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. a lot of time, like people think if you're gay, you're just going to go like become a porn star, be a prostitute. And like sometimes the stigmatism also come because in media, mm -hmm. like the people like from Punjab, like who are like openly queer and have an audience, what they are portraying like about the community and about the lifestyle is not OK. Like I see all this TikTok where like gays are just like getting insulted you getting know, insulted and they are also like you know at the same harassed. time i want to say they're fine with it which i don't mm. get like you know i want to reach out to the people from our community who are queer and tell them that if someone is bullying you someone is trying to make fun of you you don't have to be okay with it you yeah. can voice yourself up and tell them to back the hell out because you know it's your life you don't want to hear something that is hurting your feelings at the end of the day and yeah don't be scared to say yeah it. <laughs> i've seen like content being shot of people just like a straight person coming and making like really like offensive comments mm -hmm. and people just laughing be like ha 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 yeah i'm like no. no like what what are you doing with your life like you are a fucking openly queer individual who a lot of queers would look up to and that's what you're gonna like mm -hmm. give them like a boneless shell of a body just mm -hmm. there for comments and likes and could do anything like it's infuriating honestly yeah yeah I think both of your platforms that you're sharing, like on Instagram and everything else, even with your interviews, Jolene, and now with this podcast, you're sharing like positive messages and you're trying to spread awareness. I mean, like even for both of us, we know what drag is, but we have a lot of listeners who may not know what drag is. And I remember Jolene, my whole family came to the Pride <laughs> bingo and yeah. that was my first time my family came and i don't think they knew i didn't tell them what was going to happen so my brother who, someone who's not like exposed was like what's happening <laughs> what what's going on so maybe both of you can explain like what does drag mean yeah. to you and yeah i mean i would say a few weeks ago i got to define indian drag in a book which was very nice i loved that oh. so i would love to explain a little bit on what i told them uh, about drag for me drag is about you know community yes drag is extravagant drag is very sparkly shiny colorful every you know thing you can imagine but for me it's about community it's about that chosen family that gives work to each other support each other come to each other's show support each other that way too right um, if we want to look at the historical aspect of it it comes from the Shakespeare era if we want to talk about the English people, I would say, <laughs> you know, because their culture starts with Shakespeare and ends with Shakespeare. So that's <laughs> yeah. So back in that time when women were not allowed to work in the theater, men would potentially have to do women roles uh, on the stage by looking feminine. Mm -hmm. So what they would do is they would wear very long gowns, which are mm -hmm. dragging on the floor. Um, and that's from where the word drag came. 
And because typically a male was impersonating a female at that time, uh, they call drag queen. Mm. So that's how the word started in the English culture, I would say. Uh, but then later on, when people did it more and more, it helped so many people of different gender identities and sexualities to explore, to find out what they like, to find mm. out who they want to be. And that's where drag just became a phenomenon. Yeah. Um, in 80s and 90s, when um, the AIDS crisis hit, it was really bad for the queer folks to, you know, have yeah. a reputation in the community. So they would have these little drag balls happening or just the queer balls happening underground where they have people coming on, showing off their talent without any fear. It's, it's you know, it was very nice. It was a communal thing that happened. Back in our culture, if you want to look at uh, according to the Indian perspective, it's been there since ages, I would say. I'd say so for You sure. want to look at like Shiv Shakti, Shiv and Shakti, both male and a woman in like, you know, one person, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you want to look at Krishna, who would dress up as, you know, Gopiya, so that he would just go and play with them. And he would do all the other naughty things too. And we can all read them in our religious books. So mm -hmm. we have connection to drag from like ages. And it's something that have always been a part of us. What happened was when the British people came, they stopped a lot of things back in India and, you know, sexuality was also another thing. So the colonization took drag away from India too, which they have it originally, maybe a different word. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that, but if we have a time machine, I would love to travel <laughs> and know. <laughs> <laughs> Me yeah. too, but you're right. Yes, I was reading up on that as well, how, um, yeah, colonization pretty much took away from yeah. like beautiful dress and like from evacuating women or whomever to wear what they wanted to be wear whatever they wanted to wear and like showing their skin and it was just yeah. so awesome and accepting and also yeah being like non-binary whatever it may be whatever you being choose queer. to yeah, yeah like being queer it was very open it was um, very open you know like yeah. even the concept of sari the basic indian garment yes it was without the blouse, With the blouse it's yes, just yeah. you know a garment that you're wrapping around your body now when the british came they said it's too Provocative. Yeah, oh. they made it, they mm -hmm. sexualized it, I would say, and that's mm -hmm. where it became a problem that's right. uh, for them, I would say. <laughs> and when they were gone, it was still there. It was still there. They Like Indian folk, like South Asians, they mm -hmm. kind of took that on and yeah. tried to adapt to the Western society and how they kind of wanted us to present ourselves. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's unfortunate that it's still very present. Right. And but I mean, we are here to decolonize, right? Yeah. We're going to bring right. our culture back. <laughs> yes, you're very yes. right. You're very right. For me, like drag is very much about empowerment. Like I started doing drag because I was attracted towards the performance aspect of it on fashion and everything. But once I got into the community, I discovered that me being in the community is empowering to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Like the color of my skin, which back home would be made fun of. Like people would call you, oh my God, you're dark. Use this, use that, bleach your skin. You yeah. should be light skinned. The fair and lovely. The fair yeah. and lovely, yeah. the high high handsomes like <laughs> I found that showing people this is most powerful thing that I can do that I am proud of my skin and most of my drag I am very much like empowering people to be comfortable in their body and in their skin skin color and that's what matters the most to me like Jolene said like back in the day saris were just saris and no blouses mm -hmm. But that blouse was worn to protect the women from the fetishizing eyes of the Britishers mm -hmm. because women were taken advantage of when they would like walk around like showing like a lot of body. And I want to bring that back by like showing a lot of body, being brown, being queer and showing that it's OK. Dress however you want to be like show your skin, show, be, show, be proud of it like. That's what drag means to me, just like a source of empowerment where I can just reach people like people come to me and they're like, I wish I was lighter. But like after seeing you, I see like there's so much beauty in being darker. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I wish I was never. I wish that like, you know, like the there was world no existed. difference in like, the world. Yeah. 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 And like where like everyone would like not have to be like told that they should be lighter when they are born dark. You are born dark and we should be proud of it. 
hundred percent own it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're all beautiful in our own ways. Oh yeah. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. I think, yeah, both of you do spread that message. Like Jolene, yours is about, you know, empowering, bringing people together, community. And then Ra, your message is like body empowerment. Mm -hmm. Be proud of your skin. And we saw you on the share float. Shout out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that peacock, peacock look. That peacock look, though. <laughs> that peacock, though, yes. <laughs> the peacock. You, you yeah. made it. You, you, made us, you made our float, pretty much. Thank like. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I was, like, so proud of that look, honestly. Like, being on that float and being like, okay, I feel like I am the hottest person in the parade. <laughs> but, yeah. Would and you thank wear? you so much for, like just like inviting us to be there and like you know bring the community together in like Vancouver like I have seen like there's a lot of divide in like Punjabi queer community mm -hmm. where like queers would compare themselves to each other mm -hmm. and like be like oh my god another brown gay and you guys are breaking that boundary by like you know just like giving them a community where they're like okay we all have to be here together mm -hmm. we are like one and we need to just tick up and just like show that we are like powerful like that's yeah. what i really love about share yeah like we were so Thank happy you. that we got so many people on the float like that was the first time i mean shout out to alex and ash the ogs yes. they said that before they had to like tell people from the crowd come kinda, join our yeah. float because no one would come mm -hmm. they were yeah. too afraid or closeted and yeah. then this year yeah i think they had like 12 i was talking to ash oh my god like, yeah, there's like 12 amazing. people and i think this year we had about 30, 40 people, which wow. was so amazing. <laughs> it was yeah. bumping. People were like, we want to come. We want to yeah. come. We saw well, you know, like, yeah. also the music that you guys were playing was phenomenal. Yes. Like, I could when not it comes to dancing. Bollywood yeah. beats and our Punjabi music, everything else washes off. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Jolene, you were missed. I know you had your own setup. <laughs> I mean, I was there. I was just behind you guys following <laughs> you. I was like, I'm just going to keep an eye from the far. <laughs> <laughs> we also had a dance performance at the end. What yes. was your guys' experience? for this year's pride event that was like the first pride i did in my life or i have been to ever so i was really looking forward to it because when i started doing drag the covid happened and then there was no pride parade all of a sudden so i was like this is the first pride parade after covid which is gonna be like you know very big so for I'm both looking of you right both yeah. of you so, okay yeah it was my first time too and i was like oh, okay let's go pride <laughs> but and i was know, so uh, excited. at the same time when you are doing pride it's nice you're getting featured in it as the main person not only you are there to celebrate your queerness but you are there to be the inspiration for the others so that they can celebrate their queerness too so yeah that was the most wonderful part about it being booked and blessed yes. on your first ever pride new yeah. hashtag booked and blessed, booked and oh, blessed. Yeah. we were like literally the most booked and blessed queens you I guys were that. yeah, that's right so I think many I... gigs and it was it was exhausting work, but it was but... like good money yeah. <laughs> but at the yeah. same time being visible too I guess we also made history this year by being the first bound performers and first bound MC at Surrey Pride yeah, yeah. yeah. I would That's say, right. uh, yeah, even like in Vancouver Pride, I have not seen any South Asian features. Uh, so a lot of things are happening so. first time. It's just hard to pick them up when yeah. we yeah. don't know what was the past like, right? Yeah. And we have Jolene yeah. now on Surrey Board, like oh, for yeah. Surrey Pride. <laughs> oh, I will okay. be joining Surrey Pride's board to make sure um, diversity, inclusion and equality is taken care of. Perfect. and yeah we'll we make need sure we're working for the community and yeah. every race is particip participating in this festival and yeah. also like bringing like more brown artists like we have like some like artists emerging but we want to be able to give them more opportunities because what the artists like always complain is oh we don't have opportunities like we don't like feel like we'll be accepted i mm -hmm. like like me and jolie now we are working so hard Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for the announcement. <laughs> the Thank you, library. Yes. We're going to have to redo that one. <laughs> yeah. So as I was saying, uh, me and Jolene, like us being like uh, very like present in the community and working so hard, like creating opportunities, not only for ourselves, but also for our bound sisters yeah. and brothers. Like that is like the most beautiful thing that we can do because a lot of time brown artists would come up to us being like, how are you guys doing it? I have no resources. I don't feel 
comfortable in going to white spaces, being a brown performer. So we had started our own shows. Like now, like we'll be bringing more people into Pride, having our own show for Pride this yeah. next oh. year. Like Very hopefully, cool. finger yeah. cross. Like it'll we happen. Ha- we had like you know yeah. Desi Pride that wasn't happening usually, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the first one. That's yeah, the first one I think they've ever had in uh, Vancouver for this E Pride. Well, I mean, I know Alex and them had uh, like hosted like the the club nights or whatnot. Yeah, like uh, what was it? I can't remember what it was called. Bollywood Bombay or something. Bombay, Bombay, (laughs) something like that. But I think for Pride was like a big one that we were able to collab with 5X and you did a great performance there as well. Um, And you brought all the queens with you, which was so awesome. And to be honest, I hadn't met or seen them previously before that as well yeah. and I was like oh my god there's more like that's the this first time great. we met both of you I would say but we hadn't like officially yeah. had met but yeah you know that's what I always tell people I'm like there are people present it's just a lot of time we are looking at other things that we don't want to look at this thing there right like drag there was things happening which were queer focused but because there was no drag availability no brown person who was doing drag in the city nobody would could hire someone, I would say, right? Yeah. So that's where this was happening. And now finally we do have people to do these amazing things. And that's just the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. It's so nice and refreshing to hear that you guys are still, um, are you sorry, your folks are like bringing the community together, bringing the other like drag queens and even drag kings um, oh, yes. for the one year anniversary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was amazing at Dosan Curry. Um, Badsha? Badsha. Yeah. Badsha. 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 That was next level move. Oh, so. my God. I know. We have to bring them for like more like stuff. More shows. Like we're going to bring them. Yeah, we have like regular soon. shows that we host now. So we're going to be watching Bacha a lot okay and maybe we'll do like a little bit like social media collaboration so that the world can see the ball with drag king 100 yeah. percent. yeah, yeah. it's I very rare first... to have ball with drag king i know yeah, yeah. I just think as rare as you two yeah. <laughs> yeah like you know like being like born male like we are not as oppressed as women are in india like people do not understand Everything they do from the way they dress to the way they act, it's guided by their parents. Like Mm -hmm. they have literally no freedom, like more so than us. And seeing like us born women person, like actually being able to express themselves. And what brought tears to my eyes when I first hosted, when Jolene was in like Toronto, was Bacha's mom saying that I don't want to miss anything. I want to be there for each and every show. Was she there? She she was was there. there. She traveled all the way from Victoria and she traveled again when I booked them again for a show. It, it was, was amazing. amazing. Oh like, yeah. literally, yeah. I cried on stage. <laughs> Dirty cry for the first time. I was like, no, mommy, you made me cry. Aww. But no, it was like, it's so, like, beautiful to see that people, like, there are mothers and fathers who are actually, like, there for their kids, like, empowering them. That's what, like, brings so much emotion in us. Being like, yeah, we met. Like, Jolene, like, has, like, a support system from the family. I miss a lot of that. And, like, seeing, like, Jolene and seeing Bacha with that, it was, like, really, like, oh, my God, I wish I had that. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine on my own. But still, like, you know, there's this one part where you are, like, okay, I wish I had my mom say that to me. You know, at the end of the day, you're human. So you You want that family it. love. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're all human. We all crave that. Mm-hmm. And I think for us, just seeing like, for example, we've had parents on the podcast, like moms and hearing Alex's mom, Jag's mom, Ungut's mom, shout out to them. But hearing them say, love your child, yeah. support your child. Don't yeah. worry about what people say. I'm like, parents like this exist? <laughs> I yeah. know, right? Like, yeah. we need more. So mm-hmm. they are there. Yeah. And that gives us hope. And that gives listeners hope who are struggling too. I think, like you said, Ra, like you don't, you may not have family support, but then you you have us, you have mm-hmm. each other. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's also family, so important. Community support, 100%. Yeah. yeah, and that's what drag is all about. Again, community. community. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Y'all definitely look out for each other. Maybe you can tell us how you all, I know you didn't do each other's makeup today, but uh-huh. y'all your roommates. Well, you know, so. Ra do a lot of my makeup. Um, and it's the privilege that I'm so thankful <laughs> for because I'm really girl, it takes a lot of time yeah. to do, you know, this face. And when somebody <laughs> else is doing it, it's just easier to just sit down. Do you and know what Jolene down. does? She yeah. just sits. She's like, oh, do my I'm like, just <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay, first of all, look forward. I'm here. I'm not uh, up there. <laughs> I 
still do your makeup. But it's like, it's nice. I like to like do makeup on other people. Like, you know, like as a makeup artist, like I started doing makeup on my mom, on my auntie. Aww. I was like, you did not know I was queer. I was doing your makeup. <laughs> yeah, come on. Was you like, still <laughs> think, like my father the other day called me and he was like, when are you planning to get married I, to a woman? I was like, uh, uh, excuse me. First of like, all, I'm know? 22. <laughs> oh. I'm like, I'm super young for a marriage. And also <laughs> like, no. Yeah. And he was like, I have a rishta for you. There's this girl. She's done ambient and stuff. I'm like, she's an MB. How old do you think she is? She's like 24. And I'm like, I'm 22. She's older than me. I don't care about the age. Also, I don't know that person. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm pansexual. I like both things yeah. and everything that's in between that. But like, pansexual means I am connected to the personality when I don't even know the name of the person. Like, how do you expect me to connect to them? Yeah. But yeah, that being said, Makeup had been a huge part of yeah. my life and like just doing makeup on people. I love putting people in drag. Like it's just such a, the mother in me mm. that's just like, oh my God, I'm just going to do this for you, do this for you, wear that. It's just like such a like fun experience that I have and doing it with your sister. Yeah. Like it's just that much more fun. It's a like bonding experience where yeah. you get to like learn so much about it. and like so much like talking happens like when we are like just like doing yeah. our makeup. Also like, like I get to learn a lot. I get to hear all the tips that Rai is doing. A lot of time I'm like, okay, Ra, how did you do that? I want to know. Can you please <laughs> yeah. tell me? But I was like, literally, I just did that like that. I'm like, got it. Next time. <laughs> Julie is a very yeah. fast learner. Very fast learner. I mean, you know, I did not know anything about makeup, I would say, two years ago. Wow. I went to Mac and I bought a foundation and I have to Google how to use a foundation. <laughs> That's still me and you. That sounds like us. <laughs> That's, That's me, me and you. In a so, and then I was in the Yukon, so there was like no resources available, nobody available to teach me what to do. So I was the guy with the makeup trying to figure out how is this thing going to go on my face. And then finally, when I came to Vancouver, it was just everyday thing. You're doing drag so much that you have to be faster. You have to do makeup. You have to reach to the venue on time. So that's when your makeup gets better and faster. Day yeah. By day. yeah. <laughs> when we first started, like Jolene would take like what, like three hours to do her makeup? Four. Four. Wow. <laughs> and now with like Jolene, do not enjoy the process. No. Like live the fantasy <laughs> afterwards. I do my makeup in 45 minutes and you have to do it too. Mine is like an hour an hour and a half now which is not too bad but, but it's so nice you have each other because oh, yeah. when my sister's not home i'm like ah, who's gonna do my makeup you know i also want to give shout out to the community the punjabi community we have in vancouver and surrey they are really supportive i would see a lot of messages coming from the makeup artists and they would say Hi. jolene can we do your makeup i'm like oh my god this is just amazing let's just meet more people get your <laughs> makeup done and there is this one girl um nav from pile beauty heights in Pile Business Center and she always helps me and she's this amazing person. Oh, you're like oh. in Surrey, Surrey getting your makeup done. Oh, I I oh, used to like live in, in Surrey, there. you know, like I am I'm the Surrey girl. Let's be oh, real. And I'm always Surrey gonna girl. be Surrey girl. That's I love never it. Gonna I love it. How has that been though? Like in are you wearing like the full outfit in Pile Business Center? Yeah, I have done that. I would say I even have traveled in the Sky Train from Vancouver to Surrey Central Mall Amazing. and then going from there in the bus to home mm -hmm. when I did not have money to travel in the Uber. Yeah. <laughs> wow. uh, it's fun. Um, I would say the community is very different here. I had both positive and negative experiences, but then I'm strong enough to take care of those negative experiences and slap back. Why not? Yeah. 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 Yes. It's like being like visibly queer, like backlash, like comes. Like there are people who are scared of our power. Yeah. There are people who are just like, mysticized by us and then they take make it to aggression because they're like what is this feeling like what am i seeing we are so unfamiliar to them and then their defense mechanism kicks in they're like okay i don't know this thing i don't know if i want to know this thing yeah. so they just like go on attacking that's mm -hmm. like a normal human experience but like what we are doing now is showing the person like showing people that yeah there are people like us like and like, familiarizing to them, be you honest know? i'm just like you can stop us. You know, this you is can. Canada. We have rights. So maybe try somewhere else where it can work. Yeah. Or maybe where somebody listens to you. It's just not me. And if you want me to reply back to you, I have a seven-inch heel. 
<laughs> I literally had that once. I was like, my first like pride was not pride, but I was doing a photo shoot with my friends. Mm-hmm. I was in a bridal outfit I made myself, and I was like, let's be a bride because that's the biggest thing that when we can do, like being a queer person in a bridal outfit on mm-hmm. pride, because a lot of countries do not have that privilege yeah. of same sex marriage or marrying the person they actually love. Mm-hmm. So I was doing the shoot, and there was this person who was like using slurs and stuff, and I was like, I'm like, I don't mind, whatever you do. Your <laughs> you and my friend because my friends love me so much she took it like she was like fighting with that person i was like okay now i have to step in yeah so i took my heel off yeah now i was like this is seven in stiletto do you want to <laughs> see me with that yeah and the person tried to intimidate me trying to like pull something from their pocket and they were like they pulled out a bong and i was like you think you can win <laughs> like a f- no a six foot something like person in heel with a stiletto in their hand trying to attack you no. and you're wow. there a little like that with the bong oh the bong's gonna break with the, the yeah. heel pressure believe me I was me. about <laughs> to attack that person but somebody like actually like had to like take that person away physically like for like us to like not get an mm-hmm. altercation I'm like come for me like I don't care like you know like I'm strong enough I can take it I've taken it like for 20 years back home like this is oh. not new to me mm-hmm. And then, like, just seeing my per- my friend and just, like, engaging with the person, I was like, okay, now I have to protect my friend. Like, that was yeah. the only reason I would take my heels off. Yeah. I mean, we were fearful of both of you, you know, coming here in Surrey. And we were like, oh, no, we don't want you on the Sky Train just because it is hard for, like, there's been yeah. queer folks being attacked and things like that, right? Like, even being in Canada, unfortunately, there is that I mean, fear you know, it's and scary, it's but somebody have to do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how yeah. else is the people gonna know yeah. how else are you gonna stop them how else else are you gonna change it unless you are doing it right yeah. yeah so that's just one of the thing when i came in the community I'm, i was like how to be successful they said just keep doing it and don't ever stop that's the first rule of doing drag because when you're mm-hmm. present when you are visible everybody look at you and everybody want to look at you more yeah. Right. And they know yeah. your name and they say your name. And the more Jolene they say is your a name. Brand now. It's like a big, big brand. And a I love big it. Brand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody knows you when we hear your name. Anybody you bring it up, right? Like yeah. so which is which is amazing. And we're so yeah. happy and proud of you that you brought such It's a like you know the together. childhood Bollywood famous person dream coming true right there. Yeah. That you're becoming that. But it's so fast. Oh my god. <laughs> I feel like we, we should got, keep this for like we should rawness. <laughs> yeah, like we're in a library. Rawness. Everyone. We're getting rawness. kicked out. We got 15 minutes. We're probably gonna do it. Another this is our daily five. reminder. Oh, no, this is our daily <laughs> reminder that time is a colonial thing, and we should think about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should I disconnect the speaker? Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So sorry, you got cut off. No so problem. we'll just kind of go over that again. Go ahead. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So drag gives that power, you know, where you are just like standing for the people being visible in the community for them and that's just is very important and when i became famous it became more clear to me because i got more messages and people would tag me in the stories where they're watching my interviews and where their parents are sit down and able to watch those interviews and get that knowledge i feel blessed yeah i'm like what else can we ask for more the one only thing that I want to ask from our Punjabi community is how less of queer representation we have in Punjabi media, mm. especially talking Dilji, about. where you at? Diljeet, oh, I mean, you needs listening? To cast. <laughs> yeah, Diljeet, you need Diljeet. a drag queen. Diljeet. You need a beauty. You need a little bit. Hey, Dylan, who else is here? Jasmine Sandler. Jasmine, Jasmine yeah. Sandler is very queer supportive. That's what we love about her. I mean, okay. she has posted my stories a few so oh, there we go. Nice. Neeru Bajwa is very nice. She have done that. I mean, the actors are supportive. I'm looking for the producers and the director. Yeah. What are they doing yeah. to shout cast out, queer out. people, right? Not only yes. just the drag queens. There are queer actors. There are queer male and female and the people in between who are just amazing as any yeah. other drag queen is, yeah. right? So hire them is what my thing is. Mm-hmm. Be inclusive. Make sure you're including at least one queer person in every straight party you're having. Yeah, it's just nice. and don't make it that stereotypical role. Oh, yeah, they had yeah. like that Diljit movie, like Hansa Rock. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that one queer role, it was like, come on, like the two, the way the two gay men were per- like portrayed was very stereotypical. Like, hey. hey, 
put us in roles where it empowers the community it shows like people yes. po- like queer people like in mm-hmm. positive light mm-hmm. like if we are like casting straight people to pay, play gay roles to make fun of the community that is not supporting that's like actually like that's not the key it. it's very inappropriate I would yeah, say yeah. it's like yeah. when we <laughs> call like that's appropriation of like our queerness like queer baiting you are queer baiting you are making fun of the community and like that's that's why like a lot of like temp punjabi people like they would like think like being gay is a joke yeah it's like you know the movie chandigarh kare aashiqui we mm-hmm. all saw that punjabi movie yep. now it's amazing to have something like that in our industry where we are talking about queer folks trans folks and stuff right but how amazing it would be if that opportunity was presented to a trans woman yeah yes right yes. um how amazing it would have been if a lot of the cast of that movie was queer mm-hmm. or trans cuz that's what we are looking for we want our opportunities that we deserve have we had a movie have we had a movie with queer folks chandigarh kharyashki is actually a very nice movie you should no no i've seen no, it but like but queer, queer folks, queer folks like i've seen like uh i have i Bobby, mean, so like, which is very sexualized i would say back in india Yeah. Yeah, like there's there was this like one like very like femme presenting person like Bobby mm-hmm. was their name like they would be like this like always done up in the movie but that was also the role that was given I to mean, them. I mean not also, like, not something fun. we want to talk about or we yeah. want to consider as an inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I won't take that movie as that. No, so no, 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 no. That's the person like I yeah. forgot what their there. name was. It was yeah. like Bobby but like We do have queer artists like even yeah. if we want to talk about in Bollywood. I know so many people who are queer and who yeah. are in there and who actually deserve this role more than anybody. Mm-hmm. Right? 100%. And that's what I am asking for to actually cast the right people for the right roles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now I actually like able to see a lot of like drag queens like in India like on cover of Vogue's like and stuff like that. So like fashion industry is being really progressive. Mm-hmm. Like fashion industry always, always have been like queer accepting yeah. but like now that like there are drag queens like Luna, there are drag queens like Jish who mm-hmm. I see Shushiro like all three of them are like really good friends of ours yeah. and then we have seen them like do so well in India and it just like brings joy to us like seeing that it is being like those guys are bringing so much positive light sharing their stories and telling people that this it's is like, the right you know, representation I'm going back home in December and January and I will be performing and it's just Oh in India in India and Your it's first time? so wow. amazing oh. to even have that opportunity to be able to perform there as a drag queen right i'm going after 6 years so i'm really looking forward to perform what i do in front of the people that actually understands it that's yeah. actually the audience that is my audience right so i'm ready to experience the overpopulated countries <laughs> the heat of it all oh, but you're so going in people. winter girl you're fucking good <laughs> yeah. oh well ra are you going No, like right now is not the right time for me. Okay. Like yeah. uh there's a lot of like things happening personally like okay. And Rise also transitioning from the phase of student, student visa to work visa. Yeah. So that's when you want to wait and yeah. kind of figure out your things. Yeah, so I have <laughs> to figure out my life. Like my cousin's like wedding is coming up and she was like, "Are you coming?" I was like, "I'll come to when you're back. I'll come to your reception party." <laughs> <laughs> But I definitely won't be at the wedding because like I just don't It's not the right time for yeah. me to go. Nobody invite me to their wedding because I look better than the bride. So <laughs> past that, <laughs> they did not know I would come in drag. <laughs> Had they known, they would have made me the bride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, we're going to wrap up here, but yeah. we have I think one last fun question that we always mm-hmm. like to ask just a random question. Mm-hmm. Um and yeah, we just hope that everybody just is open and honest, but who did you grow up looking up to? for me it was rekha and my grandmother the two women rekha is a amazing bollywood icon we have 
a classical Bollywood icon. Mm-hmm. And I looked at Rika a lot growing up because my father admired her a lot. So those were the movies we would see on the movie uh, on the TV. And then the pictures of Rika were everywhere in my house. So growing up listening to that, and then my grandmother would tell me all about Punjabi culture, mm-hmm. all about the folk, all about the writers, all about the details that not normal Punjabi people know. So that's from where I got my cultural knowledge. So these two women were the people who I looked at the most growing up, doing drag, and even now. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Yeah, for me, like, I had no representation to look up to, like, growing up. Like, there was no brown queer people. There was nobody, like, out and about, like, non-binary or pansexual. So I could not really identify with these, like, artists growing up. But, like, Lady Gaga, like, Mm -hmm. I had, like, a lot of, like, uh, because what Lady Gaga represented was being who you want to be, don't care about the world, Mm -hmm. like, just, like, be you and i was like okay she's a cis woman she's white but that doesn't matter the message she's spreading is what i vibe with yeah Yeah. so that is what i really like appreciated about her like growing up that she was empowering people to just be themselves and like not having like a brown queer artist like myself or jolene Mm -hmm. or anybody else to look up to that was like i turned to like western culture that was jolene tags me as the coconut queen oh yeah (laughs) the brown from the outside and the white from the inside yeah because i had no person or no way to connect to the culture like i did not see anything that's where i am like it needs to change yeah we need to have people that we can look at right because you both we're all looking yes, at you, you guys, both. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you guys are both iconic. And thank you're, you. you're going to go down in history. And you're, yeah, you're bringing so much light to so many people's lives. Or oh, the National know? Museum of Punjab oh, better God. ask. Oh. Five minutes <laughs> We're keeping this. Can you give <laughs> us like two? <laughs> I like it. I like oh, so it. So raw. Oh, so okay. raw. National <laughs> Museum. Yeah. We'll go back. Sorry, Anu. Go ahead. Where were we? You you were talking about uh, the The National Museum. Museum. Oh, yeah. I was like, maybe the National Museum of Punjab should have some of my langas and put them in there. Oh, okay. Or maybe I should get a little bit older. Yeah, I think a little bit older. They they like older people (laughs) stuff more. I see that raw grounds you a bit. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we need that balance. Yeah, we all like, we (laughs) all like, we are the girl. Just calm down yeah. for a little. <laughs> we all need one of them in our lives, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, I would love to be in Madame Tussauds. Like, I think that's what, like, I would really, really love to see us, like, in Madame Tussauds and then people just taking photos with <laughs> us. But they cannot. They cannot afford us. So they're going to go <laughs> take photos with our statues. Yes. Like, that would be really iconic. <laughs> Put it out, you're putting it out there. Yeah. yeah. Putting it it's out manifestation. There Madame Tussauds. <laughs> reach out. <laughs> Awesome. I mean, we got the stuff that we never imagined a year ago. So yeah. yeah. Let's see For what real. happens. That's true. <laughs> well, thank, thank you to both of you amazing you. drag queens that thank have you. been representing, showing up, and just building such a better and bigger community out here in the Lower Mainland. Thank and you. continue doing what you're doing. But yes. you guys want to share your handles? Oh, definitely. You can follow me at Jolene Queen Sloan, J-O-L-E-N-E-Q-U-E-E-N-S-L-O-A-N. And if you send me a text, I may send you I love you back. (laughs) And you can see all the fabulous looks and the beauty at It's Only Raw, like it's only R-A. Not R A W. I know what you guys are thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so it's only Ra, like the god of sun. I am a beam of bright light here to illuminate your life. Yeah. Yay. Thank you both yeah. so much. Thank, Thank you for you. being our season opener for season two. Bye. 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 <laughs>